Are you familiar with the Spanish cave Cima de los Huesos? While there are far more interesting caves, there's something very unusual about this one. Back in 2013, human remains were discovered in this pit of bones, even though its depth is 43 feet or 13 meters. After some research, it became clear that the cave was the burial place for the victims of the very first killer in human history. What was the reason for the murder? How was it done? Let's have a look. Over the last 20 years, archaeologists have excavated 52 cranial fragments from the same body from Cima de los Huesos, resulting in a near-complete skull known as Cranium 17. Scientists determined the person's age, and it turned out that the person the skull belonged to lived approximately 430,000 years ago. However, this was not what surprised scientists. Most of the researchers' attention was focused on the head. At first, scientists suggest that the injuries occurred when falling to the bottom of the cave. However, in Cima de los Huesos, there was nothing that could cause such a symmetrical fracture. In addition to that, no signs of healing were found in the injured area. After this finding, scientists began to study skull fractures in more detail. On the frontal lobe of the skull, over the left eye, experts had discovered two penetrating cuts. Contour and trajectory analysis of the traumas suggest that two separate blows from the same object caused the injuries before death. What's intriguing is that these injuries were not accidentally caused by post-mortem injuries to the skull during its descent into the pit or its compression after death. It was concluded that the injury resulted from a blow from a stone spear or axe. That makes it an intentional murder. What's more interesting is the owner of Cranium 17 was already dead when he made his journey down the shaft of Cima de los Huesos. Based on the placement of the fractures, the attacker attacked the area above the left eye with his right hand multiple times. Following that, the assailant dragged the motionless body to the cave's depths. However, the dead man did not appear to be the only victim of several physical assaults, as the cave also contained the bones of another 28 persons. Yes, you heard that right. The other skeletons had no signs of violent death, but scientists believe the victims were already dead when they were dropped to the cave's bottom. It's extremely unusual that so many people would fall into the same hole by accident. It's possible that this first ever massacre known to humanity was carried out by a group of criminals, or that it was carried out by just one person, the very first serial killer. It's worth noting that such a crime occurred at least 130,000 years before the first Homo sapiens appeared. The killer preferred that his victims belong to the earliest human species. It's tempting to believe that only Homo sapiens' distant ancestors were vicious killers, and that intelligent men is a more peaceful creature. But this is far from the truth. The first Homo sapiens just followed in the footsteps of their forefathers in terms of violence. This is only confirmed by a new finding. Human bones also were discovered in a Romanian cave at Choclovina during World War II. The remains included a head with unique injuries, and they dated back almost 33,000 years. Scientists couldn't explain the wounds for a long time, and it wasn't until 70 years later that they were able to solve the crime, of course due to the development of contemporary high-quality equipment. To piece together the puzzle of this prehistoric assault, the researchers relied on visual analysis, CT scans, and an experiment that involved them committing various acts of violence against artificial skulls. Upon close examination of the injury, the team realized that there were actually two fractures, a linear fracture at the base of the skull and what is known as a depressed fracture on the right parietal bone. Using the CT scans, they discovered that there were no signs of healing around the fractures, ruling out the possibility that the Chiclovenia man had been injured and then recovered. Then, they looked for signs of when the bones were broken. If the skull was damaged long after the Chiclovenia man had died, the fractures would be in random patterns and be square-shaped with sharp edges because old and dry bone breaks differently from living bone. Instead, the team found classic signs that the damage happened around the time of death. This meant that the man was murdered. Fragments of bone flecked backwards into the skull, indicating the Chiclovenia man was facing his attacker head on. This is further evidence against the theory that he was killed from falling cave roof debris. The team then experimentally recreated the blow using artificial skulls filled with ballistic gelatin. 
they tested several scenarios, including falls, blows with a rock, and blows with a baseball bat to different locations. The fracture patterns found on Chiclovenia man's skull strongly resemble what happened when the artificial skulls were hit twice with a round club-like object while he was against the ground in a kneeling position. Hence, the fracture was clearly a result of violence and also that the attacker was left-handed. This case was one of the first killings, known to scientists to have happened among Homo sapiens. In modern times, we frequently blame violence on the media, such as violent video games or films. The killers we just detailed, on the other hand, did not play Fallout or watch brutal action movies. The source of the problem, in fact, is considerably deeper. Natural selection, according to evolutionary biologists, is the cause of modern violence. It is believed that our forefathers, who had a tendency for brutality, simply murdered all of their peace-loving fellows, allowing only aggressive people to dominate the clan. This was for the sake of the survival of the clan. As a result, the genes that cause violence were passed down through generations in man's evolutionary history, eventually reaching us. Despite the fact that everyone has an inclination towards violent conduct, only a few of us are capable of committing true crimes. In truth, in addition to hostility, nature has provided us with empathy and sympathy, as our existence has always depended significantly in part on our ability to engage with others. Coexistence with our own species was possible thanks to our ability to empathize and collaborate. In psychiatry, however, some people simply lack this quality. These individuals are known as sociopaths and psychopaths. Due to a lack of emotions, such humans seek the enjoyment of damaging themselves or injuring others. Whether this antisocial personality disorder is innate or is a consequence of the influence of upbringing and the surrounding social environment remains an open question. To commit a murder, though, you don't have to be a psychopath. It's sufficient to have a strong emotional bond with your potential victim. According to data from the United States Bureau of Statistics, around 30% of all female murder victims were murdered by their own spouses. Former spouses are responsible for the deaths of another 18% of women. Strangers are responsible for only 8.7% of all female homicides. This is because people typically act rationally and impulsively in emotionally charged situations, which can result in unexpected and lasting outcomes. These facts are important because at the dawn of scientific research, there were two opposing points of view on the nature of man. On one hand, Thomas Hobbes claimed that Homo sapiens' nature is exceedingly aggressive and that humanity's entire evolutionary growth is a war of all against all. On the other hand, Jean-Jacques Rousseau felt that human civilization was founded on cooperation and the desire to be a full member of a social community. To this day, the debate between the two sides rages on as to who is truly correct, Hobbes or Rousseau. What exactly is man's true nature? Our conclusion is that both assertions are correct. Human nature has the ability to be both destructive and creepy at the same time. Aggression has aided the human race in surviving in the harsh conditions of the primitive Earth and established itself as the planet's dominant species. At the same time, our ability to interact and sympathize with others has aided us in the creation of oral and written discourse, science, art, and culture, but most importantly, the control of our own animal tendencies. Well, at least a bit. Despite the fact that acts of violence still occur, most modern individuals believe that killing is unethical and undesirable. This gives us hope that in the long run, violence will be reduced to a relic of the past. What do you think about the motive behind the first murder in human history? Let us know in the comments! And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it and also subscribe to our channel for your regular dose of whodunits. See you in the next one! Until then, stay safe, stay warm, and don't get any crazy ideas.